So thank you very much、uh, to join us, Ario. And so first of all, could you give us a short introduction of yourself and the courses you teach at UCL? Sure.、Um, well, I'm Ario de Paula. I teach、uh, econometrics in the second year、uh, undergraduate course, and I've been doing so for ten years.、Uh, occasionally, I do teach at the graduate level as well, but mostly I teach at the undergraduate level. So I've been at UCL for about ten years now, so quite a while. Yeah, and before that, I was in the United States.、Uh, I was at the University of Pennsylvania, and I did my PhD at Princeton University. Um, and prior to that, I was I was in Brazil, where I'm from. So I grew up in Brazil, and I was there until my mid twenties. Thank you for the introduction. So obviously, you are passionate about econometrics. So could I ask, how did you come to econometrics? <laughs> I am passionate about econometrics, indeed.、Uh, I have to say that I was co-opted into econometrics. When I was、uh, a student in college, in the mid '90s, early to mid '90s in Brazil, we had very high inflation and we have had lots of macroeconomic issues. So most Brazilian students that would go on to higher degrees,、uh, PhDs, and and so on, they would mostly study macroeconomics and stabilization policies. And then when inflation was tamed in Brazil. Uh, I started developing when I was in my master's program an interest for applied theory. So I went to do my PhD, wanting to be an applied theorist.、Uh, when I was there,、uh, as I was signing up to be a TA, I was assigned to teach econometrics, and I got to interact with、uh, mentors, supervisors that showed me that econometrics was much more than just statistics, but there was A very close connection to economics, so it was a little bit of an accident that I ended up in econometrics, but I don't regret it. I got to be in econometrics and still use tools that I that I that I was fond of,、uh, either from my macro days or my micro days. Okay, <laughs> that sounds like a very like interesting experience. Um, so you talk about how you get into econometrics and when you decide to be a TA. But、um, may I ask why do you want to be a TA? Is there anything or lecturer? Is there anything particular attractive to you? Yeah. So when I was when you're doing a PhD,、uh, you actually it's part of your training to also engage with teaching.、Uh, of course, you know you're there for the teaching, but also for the research. And what you discover as you go along is that the two complement each other.、Uh, I had already some interest in public speaking. I like to speak in public, and you know.、Um, but when you're trying to explain a concept to an intelligent audience that may not be particularly familiar with the concepts you're trying to to touch upon, then you discover what you don't understand. And what you understand well, and how to shift the problem. So my attraction to teaching comes partly from the fact that, well, you know, if I understand this very well, I should be able to to convey、uh, this idea to the students. And if I can't, it's because I probably don't understand it very well. And also,、um, you have mentioned that、uh, you stay in Brazil until you are in your twenties. So what brought <laughs> Brought you to、uh, the United States and then come to UCL. Yeah, you know, you asked me what got me into econometrics, but perhaps a more, perhaps a more accidental answer would be what brought me into economics. So I did economics because I actually wanted to go into diplomacy. I wanted to be a diplomat. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and back home, the most common careers you would take. Prior to joining the foreign service, would be either law or economics, and I thought law was a bit、uh, boring to my taste. So I decided to do economics because it brought together, you know, mathematics and history and things that I that I kind of liked, but on which I didn't necessarily want to specialize solely.、Uh, and then I got a taste for it. I got a taste for for economics. 
Now, one of the things that attracted me about diplomacy is to get to live abroad and experience other cultures, see, you know, uh, the way other people live and, 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 and be a bit of an observer in that. So partly my decision to go abroad, aside from the academic excellency of uh, the programs uh, that we're talking about, was also a desire to see the world from outside of, of my home country. And as an academic, you can do that. So that's partly what brought me to the US. Uh, and then I stayed there for a few more years uh, after my PhD. And uh, I remember I presented a paper in a conference and some of my senior colleagues here at UCL saw it, decided to take a risk on me and, and, and offer me a job. And for what I do, UCL is, is one of the best places in the world. So I was very happy to, to come to UCL and especially in a city like London, which, which is in my opinion, the best city in the world. <laughs> Um, actually, I have never been abroad since I was like 18. And the uh -huh. first time I come to Europe is the first day I arrive at London and go to the <laughs> registration for my UCL ID card. And I actually got the same reason as you. Like, I want to see the world outside my country. <laughs> Thank you. Um, also, I saw on your website that a considerable part of your work is about the econometrics of networks. Mm -hmm. I don't really understand the concept, but can you tell us what do you like most about it? <laughs> yeah, so by networks these days, once you start uh, looking at networks, you start seeing networks everywhere. Uh, but it's essentially a representation of connections, relationships. So you can think about uh, people, you can think about households within the household and across households, you can think about firms, uh, buyers, uh, uh, you know, purchasing inputs from, from uh, a provider. Uh, you can think about countries, uh, regions, and so on and so forth. So there are various things that you can actually represent uh, via networks. And so you have this uh, uh, interactive system that from the perspective of an economist is quite attractive. Because then you have to decide, you know, how does this firm sets its prices and decides on establishing a business relationship with this other firm? How does this individual decides to become a friend with that individual? And how does that decision affect other decisions? So um, once you put this all together, what you end up with is a system of equations, much like what we saw in econometrics. Wow. Uh, we saw systems of uh, simultaneous equations. They are a little bit more complicated. Uh, they will give rise to multiple equilibria, things that you may have seen in micro. And then you put all of this in the pan and then you mix it all together. And it's a wonderful uh, recipe for, for entertaining things in econometrics and economics and the real world. I mean, today we live in a highly networked context. Uh, in That's that. really amazing. Actually, I've never thought about like econometrics can allow you to prediction of things like relationships. That's oh, really yes, amazing. Can. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we, we can we can we can we can uh, debate on how high the R squared for that <laughs> prediction is. <laughs> um, also, I think um, as you've mentioned that econometrics can like allow you to um, like predict the relationship between different people or households. I assume like this mm -hmm. also has great application in COVID-19, right? You need to predict yeah. how people interact in the pandemic. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So in fact, when I was in grad school, uh, I used to take courses uh, in other departments and actually took a course in disease dynamics, which is epidemiology uh, in the biology department. And if you see uh, the typical models that are used in epidemiology, of course, you know, they have very sophisticated ones, but the, the workhorse models, there are systems of differential equations that will establish, you know, I, I'm in touch with this person and this person may be infected and I may get infected and so on and so forth. But one of the things that doesn't show up as often, and it's something as an economist we are trained to think about is, well, if the prevalence rate of a particular uh, disease is very high, say COVID-19 rates are very high, I'm going to change my behavior. <laughs> I'm going to react to that. There is an elasticity to that. And there are a couple of papers by economists uh, dealing with that. And I'm sure by epidemiologists, but, you know, you, you start seeing all of these things together, you know, relationships, absolutely contact rates and, 
and, and economic incentives and reactions to that as well, which is where I think us as economists can contribute uh, quite a lot. Um, so why do you think people should, it, should start econometrics and um, what can they expect when they do uh, study econometrics? I think a good answer to this is, well, you may want to study econometrics because you want to apply it and you probably will need to apply it depending on what you plan to do afterwards. I think in many uh, employment situations these days, this is something that you will be doing. So you better know what you're doing. But mostly, even if you're not doing that, because we live in such a data rich uh, time uh, that uh, you should study econometrics so that you're not fooled by uh, you know, uh, by the news and, 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 and by how things are framed when, you know, in, in fact, you shouldn't be fooled. So uh, you should learn that, you know, uh, whatever quantification you have, statistical uh, regularity you have, has behind it assumptions, particular models, but also data and the, the way data is collected and you know, the data may not be representative. Uh, people may be showing you a graph that, 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 that it's toying around with how you perceive relationships. So I think the main reason why you should study econometrics is just to be vaccinated against, you know, uh, uninformed uh, 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 dissemination of, uh, of particular results that you're critical about uh, the information you receive uh, on such a data rich uh, moment in our lives and um, let's come to the last question is um mm -hmm. can you recommend one or two of your favorite books to us okay so i find it very hard to to rate books as my favorite or my second favorite because i mean books like many other things they are they have many dimensions and you know putting them in a, in a particular order it's a bit hard but, so what i'm gonna do is recommend that I'm, the book that i'm reading now Mm -hmm. which is a slightly different book. So it's this book here. I'm not sure if you can see. It's called Letters of Note. Mm -hmm. And it's a book that assembles several different letters by famous people to famous people, by common people to famous people, by famous people to common people. So you will have, for example, a letter from Queen Elizabeth Ooh. to President Eisenhower uh, giving him the recipe for scones or something like that. <laughs> or uh, Hunter S. Thompson, which was a famous writer, American writer, writing a letter to a friend when he was in his early 20s, giving him the advice about, uh, about life. Wow. Uh, so uh, it's, it's, it's uh, relatively easy to read because uh, you have letters. They're not very long. So you can just, you know, when you have time, you read them. And then it's, in these days with emails and, 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 and very fast communication, text messaging, it's a bit of an art to write a good letter, especially a handwritten one. So it brings us back a little bit to how people communicated and, 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 and could do that in style. So that's, that's a book that I, that I find very, very entertaining. Uh, and I would definitely recommend reading. Uh, so that would be my, my, my recommendation for the moment. <laughs> Thank you very much. That sounds like a very interesting book. Um, I'm definitely going to uh, read it. Um, so. Uh...